Let's get a little deeper into, into the nature of ancient warfare and what it was like for the individual warrior on the field. And the reason I get into this, or I want to get into this, is because it, it spills down into the way we today, contemporary Westerners, think of what war is all about. Now, there's a, a great quote from one of my favorites, a character named Archilochus, who was a mercenary soldier and a poet, and who said a bunch of, has a bunch of wonderful quotes. But one of his is him kind of talking to himself that gives us a real insight into what it was like, ancient warfare. And a quote goes like this, Be brave, my heart. Plant your feet and square your shoulders to the enemy. Stand fast among the man-killing spears. And that to me is great because it really gives us kind of a sense of what phalanx warfare was like. That you were locked in close combat with an enemy where spe hand thrust spears were coming down like that. And your, your ideal was to stand fast behind your shield and endure this. Now, this, let's contrast this, because we're going to be talking about Thermopylae a lot, Greeks against Persians, with warfare in the East, which was quite different. And if you think about warfare in the East, in Persia, Medea, Egypt, Lydia, uh, Babylonia, the landscape there was wide open. It was horse country. And so... The, the ethic became, or the style of warfare became, missile warfare, where it would be arrows, it would be javelins, it would be flung spears, and a lot of times this would come from mounted warriors, from cavalry, from horseback. And so there would be great battles where people would charge in, charge out, come back again, which was quite different from, from uh, the landscape in, in Greece, it's not really like this landscape completely, but Greece is a very mountainous country, really rocky and barren, and very few places where there were grasslands where horses could be, could be raised or cavalry could practice. So what happened was, among these rocky mountains of Greece, there would be certain flat areas that uh, later became known as the dancing floors of war. And there were certain plains where an armies could clash and that battles were fought on over and over. Leuctra, Coronea, um, Chironea, and um, even Thermopylae, of course, was a place like that. Let me draw a little diagram in the sand here to give you more of a sense of how the Greeks fought. And we'll, we'll pay attention to this beetle here. He's get out of the shot pretty soon. There's a famous story about the Persian general Mardonius trying to explain to his king, to King Xerxes, the way the Greeks fought, because the Persians had no concept of this. And he said, the Greeks are absolutely crazy. So the way they fight is they find the flattest space they can possibly find. One army goes on one side, one on the other. They meet in the middle, and they just beat each other's brains out. And the, re the reality was really pretty close to that. On these plains in Greece, one army would line up along one side. The other army would line up across from here. It might be a quarter mile, half mile, a mile in between. And then they would just advance toward each other straight ahead until they clashed right in the middle. And this was that zone where be brave my heart and standing in the, amid the man killing spears. Now, what was interesting about this sort of thing is, of course, this is our concept of, uh, we still have that today, the concept of the decisive pitched infantry battle. If you think of Gettysburg, if you think of any of Napoleon's fight, Alexander's fights, they sought, these generals sought to, to draw the enemy into a place where they could finally face them head to head amid this clash in the middle and fight it out once and for all. Now, the other interesting thing here is in the day, great days of Alexander, when he really had evolved warfare, this line here might be three miles long so that if you were fighting on this side, you had no clue what was going on over here. You couldn't see it, you couldn't hear it, you had no idea. And a lot of times what would happen would be one side might be victorious on this side, push the enemy back, while over on this side, the enemy, the enemy was winning. And then there would wind up being a third fight in the middle after this all happened. So in any event, this is kind of where a lot of our Western thinking today still derives from this type of pitched battle shield-to-shield -shield clash.